And now to our first conversation. The federal government has granted Nigeria liquefied natural gas company 20 billionaire tax waiver for the construction of uh, the Bodo Boni Bridge in River State. The executive order signed by the President Mahabdu Buhari in 2020 authorizes companies that provide critical infrastructure like roads to be granted tax waivers. NLNG has so far received uh, three credit certificates in the last three years, valued at about 46 billion naira. The fourth is expected later in the year. And Dangote Nigeria Limited has also participated in infrastructure credit, which offers uh, tax waivers. How popular and impactful is the executive order? Uh, Ms. Mr. Oladipo Ajayi, head fixed income at Chapel Hill Denham. We'll discuss this and take a look at the markets. Hello, Mr. Ajayi, great to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so Nigeria liquefied natural gas company, the, the 20 billion tax waiver for the construction of the Bodo Boni Bridge in River State. Um, looking at this, it looks like a win-win uh, situation for NLNG and River State. What's your take? Uh, for me, I think uh, it's a laudable decision. And um, just like what you actually mentioned, it's a win-win for both um, LNG and uh, River State, and on the on 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 on, on the fact that um, both are actually beneficiary on the part of LNG, they are able to get a tax waiver, and on the part of River State government, they are also able to get infrastructure um, on on their hand. And uh, the 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 project is a, is a very good one. And um, when when the government started um, this um, project in um, 2019, um, the article was settled. Uh, we all know that um, the government's revenue is doing thing, and as a result, um, most of the uh, revenue they actually allocated to they allocated to um, um, recurrent expenditure. But uh, considering um, um, opportunities like this, this help the government to actually remove the burden of capital uh, expenditures from them, and also push it to more of uh, the corporates. And uh, we think uh, this is a very, very good one. Yeah, but uh, we've heard of NLLG, we've heard of Dangote. One would have expected that, I mean, because of the tax waiver that this comes with, it would be very popular and we'll hear of a lot of corporates, you know, that have participated. Or is, are there hurdles that stop other people from participating and, and gaining from this? I think there are other people also in the streamline to also participate in this uh, in this uh, in this PPP project, and um, for 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 a fact we know very well that a lot of people want to actually see the truthfulness of the government around this, and um, with what people have seen around uh, what the way the government and the LNG and Dangote um, on 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 the Dangote project, the one at Obachana and um, the one at. Um, um, a purpose of the expressway. It, um, it's a very good one for, for most people and they will actually want to do the same line because it's a very great opportunity. Aside the fact that you get a tax waiver, it's also a very good way to actually write your name in the hearts of people and it's a very good uh, CSR uh, project for some of, those, uh, some of these organizations. All right, let's uh, take a look at the markets. Last week, the equities market had five uh, positive sessions, uh, bargain hunting in the banking counters. What do you think um, motivated investors this time? I think uh, it's more of a, a time for Q1 um, results. And uh, a lot of people are actually try to front run the market around that. And also, some people are actually uh, at the back, on the back of the results released, and um, a lot of people are also actually um, actually taking a um, position around the results. Um, as much as we know that the market is down, there are also some names that you want to actually cherry pick in the market. Um, over the weekend, we had the Van Gogh mentioned that um, the demand, um, they, they have over demand uh, of about 40%. So when you have, uh, when organizations like that need to increase um, capacity to actually meet demand, it also sounds good that um, there will be a, lot, a, a very good revenue from such organizations and uh, maybe by the end of the year, their performance can actually um, outweigh what they actually reported last year. However, we still feel that um, um, the equity market is still not a, a very, very bright um, um, opportunity now. Considering that we know fully well that um, the fixed income space um, yields are actually going up, and as a result, that's also a deterrent to a lot of um, 
uh, portfolio manager to actually be more active in their equity space. Mm. So, you, like you mentioned, the earning season for the first quarter of 2021 begins. What's your outlook for that? We, well, he, for what, if you look at the year, um, it's not been a very um, extraordinary year. Um, some, some of the uh, organizations, like maybe the banks, uh, were able to actually post a very good result. Um, however, um, on, on, the, on the other side, there are some, or some other companies on the, in the market that will find it very difficult to actually repeat uh, what it did last there. So it's, it's going to be a mixed result, and they will see it coming out we saw some of the results we lost the last day we saw stambic and uh, it came short uh, of our expectations um so it's going to be like that in, in the market throughout uh, throughout the uh, this quarter uh, we're going to see results that will actually wow us and we're going to see results that will feel that um it's not so attractive enough uh, compared to our expectation so what we're expecting um for this quarter will be more of a mixed result than um, a, um, a bright result all right. At, at the bonds market, yields adjusted to the higher stop rates at uh, Wednesday's uh, federal government uh, bond auction. What direction do you expect uh, yields to take? Yeah, um, in the short run, um, what we're looking at for this week, we'll, we'll likely see a lot of activity in the bond space. And um, that is premised on, on the level of liquidity that we're expecting in the system. Um, for bond payments on three maturities uh, between today and tomorrow, we're expecting um, about 160 billion to hit the system. And um, some of this fund will go back to the bond space. And uh, as a result of that, uh, we feel that um, PMs will go around market share picking and we feel that will, will help the market for, for, for this week. And uh, also on Wednesday, there will be NCB auction. Tomorrow we are we're expecting over 100 billion maturity from, OMO, from the OMO market and uh, um, I would think that will also help the market as well and also we are expecting about 301 billion from um, from FAC payments for this for this month we hit the system and um, with the level of liquidity that we're expecting uh, we expect market to actually react positively however considering the action um, antecedents of the um, of the monetary policy guys in, in the recent part we might likely see the CBM be, be, become more active and uh, more aggressive this week to actually mop the liquidity in the system. But however, if the, system, the CBM allows the liquidity to actually stay a bit in the system, we will see a more of a very bullish market. But if, on the other hand, the CBM decides to be extremely aggressive, uh, we will actually see more of uh, more like a flat um, uh, fixed income market for this week. So what, what does the inflation rate have to do with this? I mean, we're dealing with 18 plus percent now. What impact does it have? Of course, uh, anybody that wants to invest in a long, long detailed instrument, you want to look at uh, what could be going to be your real return. And if you look at the way inflation has been behaving, um, I think um, the behavior has been rational. And as a result, investors are looking for opportunities that can actually help them to actually um, give them a, a positive real return on the market. But to speak now, um, uh, a lot of investments in the market, they are, they are still uh, giving a negative real return. Uh, uh, maybe the equity market would have been a solid, but uh, as we speak, uh, it's still not a, a clear and a good to go area as we speak now. However, they are, like I mentioned sometimes, that uh, there are other instruments in the market um, maybe um, that will give you um, better than what we are getting in the fixed income market now. Um, and I think um, investors will actually have to look around that to actually find a way to actually uh, reduce their negative real return. Now, what, what, sorry, what are some of those? You said there are other instruments. I mean, some people will be curious, as in, can you give us which of this other way we could go? Uh, okay, for example, in, uh, my, in Chapel Hill, we have uh, our NDI, NDI, uh, NIDF fund. NIDF fund is benchmarked around a 10-year uh, FGM return plus four to 500 basis point return. So what that means is that if a 10-year instrument is showing 13%, the return you get from an ID investing in an uh, in Chapel Hill and NIDF fund is about 17 to 18%. So if you are getting 17% return on your investment, it's very close to the 18.1%. Um, that's currently the inflation figure is giving you. So your negative real return is reduced at least to a PRS minimum for uh, maybe if not fully covered. 
All right, so last week, the, the Treasury bill's secondary market remained bearish following the persistent uh, illiquidity in the interbank market. Uh, what do you envisage uh, demand will be this week? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I said we're expecting a lot of liquidity to hit the system this week. So we feel that will affect the um, Treasury uh, market positively. However, on Wednesday, when there's going to be an auction, if you look at the past uh, LTB auction, we'll see rates move um, north on the long end now, that means on the 364 debut. So same thing, market might likely be expecting the same thing to actually happen uh, for this auction. But uh, on my own part, I think uh, if rate is moving up this auction, I don't expect the rate to move above uh, 9.5. And one of my reasons for thinking that is currently the OMO rate is at 10.1 for the same maturity. And uh, when you move NCB closer to um, the OMO rate, um, then the, the OMO, OMO view, uh, would might not likely achieve the main reasons why uh, the CBN is actually issuing that instrument. But one of the uh, reasons for issuing OMOB is to much more liquidity from the system. And when you're doing that, the market sees you as being very aggressive as a result. The market wants a better return than what, than what they would get on the normal NCB, uh, NCB auction. So if we the GMO finally moved rate, um, maybe uh, closer, maybe to 10%, what that means is that the market will likely, and uh, maybe the FEM will likely be asking for more rates on the OMO front. All right, looking at the equities market, what counter do you see, you know, getting more attention and demand this week? Come again, please. As I'm looking at the equities market, what counter uh, do you see getting more demand uh, this week? I, I think uh, getting more demand is premised on the result that will likely come out of the market this week. If... Um, if we see very good results of the market, there are very active, there's a very good uh, chance that we will see a lot of activities on, around around the market. But if the market is not um, showing out good results for this week, we might actually see more like a, a flat or a regressive market this week. All right, Mr. Ladipo um, Ajayi, the head of fixed income at Chapel Hill Denham, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us this Monday morning and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.